uh, back again with another Moonkin Monthly. Uh, this time we are joined with the Sanghelius Wow, also known as Sang the Druid, also known as Mount Farmer of Limit, also known as MDI Competitor, <laughs> also known as Exiled Legion, right, former Exiled Legion Superstar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we're joined Peace. with Sang this week <laughs> from uh, Limit, and then we also got the illustrious Nick Druid with a broken camera, so Rip. some things never change. Scuff Nick. Rest in peace. Scuff Nick, indeed. All right. Sang, you got anything that you want to say about yourself aside from the memes that I just threw out there? Uh, no one can beat me in a mount off. That, that'll never happen. Wait, but I watched you get third in an Asmund Gold mount off. Nah, not anymore. I'm a changed man after that. Uh, as, aside from getting gifted the the long boy, what does yep, that actually after change? after that, I'm unbeatable. Okay, unbeatable. <laughs> yeah, that's it, same. Yep. <laughs> All right. And so, uh, <laughs> expanding on that, got a big shout out to our Patreons. Arui, Gesu, Hamflaps, Krona, Nude, Pixel, Saro, Solanus, Milpy, Mr. Sliggy, Tiggs, and Zwipta. Big ups to all those guys, so thank you guys so much. So, on the show today, we are going to be talking about Essences, uh, Shara and Mechagon, and that should be about it. So, Essences. First things first, we had a little bit of a moment where we thought Moon Kenora was going to be our Conflict and Strife PvP Essence. So basically, whenever you Star Surge, you end up giving crit to eight nearby allies, which would have essentially made Moonkin mandatory and felt horribly unfun to play with Essences. But they changed that to be Thorns. Sang, do you think that the, overall this is a good change? Well, if I had to think, looking at all the PvP talents, uh, I'm, I'm actually glad it's not Moonkinora because, like, in my opinion, I, like, it's, a, it's a great, like, it's just a really strong talent to have for a raid but you have to use that in your major slot and it's just like on a personal level uh you know it's it's not it's definitely not the best essence for the the individual you know druid to use but overall as a raid that means like you'll have to have one or two moonkins dedicate to having that and then the the rest can obviously run whatever but i mean uh at the change like thorns would have been the only talent i think that would have been any option at all i mean you could have thrown in i mean i you read and they don't do much other than cyclone and cyclone wouldn't uh, would be an interesting talent to have but definitely i think it would have been thorns so i think that is overall just better uh it being a usable essence uh i think it has its uses but uh, i don't think it would be the best do you think Thorns will be usable in Mythic Plus, though? Okay, so I've, ha I've had people like ask me what I thought so far. Do you, do you think that Thorns can be good enough to be our Mythic Plus essence? And two, do you think it should be? Um, Looking at the damage Thorns does, it definitely... I could definitely see it being used. Uh, it could be situational, you know, tra like even... Even looking at just uh, like a maybe like if you put on your tank on like a two or three mob pack, you know, every use will do like 200k and it's a 45 second cool. It's fairly consistent. If you add even more mobs on top of that, it'll it'll actually do a lot of damage caps out uh, obviously like 5% of your health. But um, it like trying to, to compare to other essences, uh, there's a few that maybe could compete, uh, but if you're I think it would just depend on, you know, I would have to actually see numbers on it. I haven't done any mm -hmm. dungeons with it, but I, I do think that it would be for sure one of the better essences, if not maybe the best, especially for some dungeons. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. My, my major issue with it, so first off, I think it could be tuned correctly to where it does do a significant amount of damage, even though it does apply a dot and like you said it caps out at like five percent of the target's maximum hp you can like refresh the dot but my, my major issue with it is that so a lot of the essences give the player a significant amount of power um individually where it feels like thorns almost like doesn't do that to some degree it doesn't really like impact our rotation or do anything that feels like it's a lot better especially whenever you're comparing it to some of the other things like visions of perfection or any of the other talents. So I don't know if I specifically want it to be as good. Like, 
good enough to be looking to take inside of Mythic Plus. So basically for me, I think I think I would prefer it to almost be something that PvPers take almost completely independently of what PvEers take. Um, Nick, do you do you have any real thoughts on Thorns as like an essence as a whole? I'm scared that it might just be like completely nerfed in PvE and just only viable for PvP certain I'm all, like I'm situations. Okay with that, though. Like there's no real I'm I'm fine too with it, but it's like I I I can really see it just be like useless in in any PvE situation, even dungeons. Because they just nerf it to the ground. I mean obviously we don't know the numbers right yet, right? Yeah. So I mean should should it be useful, I guess is something that is almost like a different uh, conversation, right? Because it seems like after all the changes that they made to the Conflict and Strife Essence changes, they pretty much look like they don't want any of them to be used in PvE, which I think is yeah. okay. I think they want it to be like a legendary ring for PvP style thing, where um, they have a choice of either picking more damage or another honor talent, which for PvP seems like it's a really good change. But personally for PvE, it feels like they should almost keep them independent of one another. Like, I'm okay with it not being as good. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think they don't want it to be, like, very competitive with the, you know, just the other traits. Like, it's it's a good, but I don't think it's supposed to be competitive yeah. with the best traits for PvE. I, I, I hope it stays that way. Because personally, there's so many other fun traits that you could be looking to play that just, it, it feels like it would almost negate, like, the essence system for balance as a whole. If, like, they're looking to only play, like, thorns that you just throw on your tank in mythic plus and it's kind of just like you throw it in, in your afk you put it on on cooldown it's like a dot that you keep applying all right yeah so so far we've seen like visions and perfection be looking like what we think that moonkin's going to end up being looking to take as a whole just because of like the cooldown reduction on our cooldowns but that has been recently changed and then just kind of like the streaking stars interaction with how we end up proccing our cooldowns do you think that there's any other like trait or essence that we should be maybe looking to take nick or do you think that it's just going to be visions of perfection the whole entire time or is there anything that you uh like any other thoughts that you have to give about it to be honest i'm like a big fan of the crit one i don't remember the name but that shit owns i love it man like just having like 40 percent crit in your star search actually feels so great compared to like currently where you just end up having like no crits at all sometimes mm -hmm. it balances out like the RNG part of, of crits. It's like a bad luck protection, sort of. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have Vision of Perfection, which like ends up being very RNG heavy when it procs and when not. Which kind of... I'm not a fan of that, but I guess we have to deal with it. It's definitely like one of the mandatory ones to use. Yeah, and you're basically talking about the minor of Blood of the Enemy, right? Which yeah, is, yeah. Which the, is whatever the minor you... one. The major one sucks okay. really bad right now. What do you mean that? Uh, it's unbound force, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The the one where you, you get the guaranteed crit chance. Oh okay. Oh okay. Yeah yeah yeah. Blood of the enemies, the the haste whenever you get it to twenty five stacks, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay yeah yeah, and then and then the minor for unbound force is. Okay. The That's crit the reckless force. up to yeah, like yeah. what is it, fifteen or twenty? Twenty, right? Yeah. And then you get. And then you get like hundred percent five crit seconds for yeah. five. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I, I think in general, it looks like Visions of Perfection might be just still even the go-to for pretty much all of the classes, as long as the RNG is tuned correctly. I, I just really hope that it, it ends up giving us more choice, right? Because that seems like the the goal of like the SS system as a whole is to give players more choice with what they're looking to play. But, I, but with like the Conflict and Strife initial stuff, and then just potential tuning issues, I think I, I'm, I'm concerned with the fact that it might not give you choice. And a lot of it also has to do with the fact that there are generics mixed in with like class specific stuff. So like reducing cooldown on celestial alignment or incarnation is always going to be good. But then if you have to balance it against like condensed life force, blood of the enemy, unbound force, then it's going to be pretty challenging. I think we might end up seeing like a, a system that's similar to the Azerite. Uh, Sang, do you have any like opinions on whether or not it should be more class specific or more generic or similar to what the Azerite system is right now? Um, it's hard to, I would say, like, it could go either way. I mean, class-specific ones generally end up 
like I actually like class specific, you know, interacting mm -hmm. essences. It's a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, personally, my my favorite is cooldown reduction. I just love any time that you know Mooncanada has, has had a cooldown reduction mechanic to their gameplay. It has been really good. Now, how that cooldown reduction happens is important too. I definitely think that um, you know with how powerful that our you know our cooldowns are that just like any interaction with that is almost just the go-to i would like to see that the you know there to be some other interactions maybe uh or just the you know the other essences that have the you know the unused or the elemental you know i would like to see them maybe come like definitely do well i definitely want to see those do well it would be yeah what do you think about Memory of Lucid Dreams then, which is the the increased generation on your resources one? That one is uh I've played with it. It is it's quite I honestly don't know the numbers. <laughs> Does it feel bad? <laughs> it it's really hard to notice. I do I do say that. It I mean, even if it does proc, you know, you get half your resources back, I think. I don't know if you get uh, all of it back in any case, but you get like half of it. Like it's mm -hmm. it's really small, uh, and that the the increased rate. I mean, unfortunately, it actually feels really bad to play, especially when like you're just gonna be. I you, I mean, you don't want to cap astral power, but you're gonna be you're gonna be capping empowerments or astral power. One or yeah, the other. And, I I think that I think that's the issue. It is you're gonna end up having yeah. to cap something, it, and it's not like in Legion where we could. Just if we were going to cap empowerments, we could just instantly spend on a starfall and pretty much be damage neutral for that spender. But now it's like I, you still have to star surge. Yeah, good luck what? trying to cast starfall on single target. And actually, yeah, <laughs> and actually, what I found out about that essence, I actually did find out, is that if you have the on use active and then it refunds a spell, it'll refund double. So you just gain. That's what I was like, really for. hoping for, dude. So <laughs> it feels be like, so awkward. You just be, a, you'll be at like eighty ash power. You cast one, and then you're just a hundred. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a reason that they removed the increase uh, resource generation from Incarn because it felt awful. Like, not only did it just feel bad to use, it felt just bad as a cooldown for Moonkin. I mean, it, I, it might be better for other classes. Like, does it work with mana, or does it only work with like? Yeah, it works with mana. It, I, I, uh, for resto, like it was mana. It's actually like procs okay. a lot too. So, so it can actually, it's, it's probably going to be healer stuff. Because, I mean, especially since it's also giving leech, uh, whenever you have the rank three of it, it looks like. The, and I won't say the essence is bad necessarily. Uh -huh. It just does feel really weird. It's just bad for moon could probably. But it, it does, it does proc a decent amount, and you do get verse or something. I think every time it procs, like five hundred verse. So it is a, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe some. I'd have to see numbers on it. Yeah. Which, the question, which three would you run? Which major and which two minors as of right now? Uh, major, I mean, I think overall, I, I would say Vision of Perfection. Unbound Force, I think, definitely is a minor. I would almost always mm -hmm. want that as a minor. Uh, the third, uh... honestly, I could see it being, I mean, I haven't, I haven't played with Condest Life force that, that elemental thing and this there's some of them that i mean I've, i see what they do and i just can't see them being good maybe by numbers i'd have to actually find out but uh honestly just one of the like the the element the condensed life force or mm -hmm. even uh the crucible of flame you know they just do somewhat decent numbers right now you don't think that blood of the enemy minor it it, uh, it seems like that would have the best synergy with uh, unbound or whatever, right? Yeah, actually, I didn't. I didn't think about the minor on that one. I I always keep from my, uh, thinking about the on use in that one, where you have to get in the melee. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, hop in the melee real quick. <laughs> but yeah, no, that one. That one is pretty good too, for sure. It would actually, yeah, it would, it, it would, it would, well it would go well with unbound force. But I think those would be the three that look decent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I think the third one could be several. For sure, but Unbound Force definite definite minor, and I think Visions is currently just too strong to not be a major. Uh huh. I think we should just really run a healer trait personally. <laughs> just, just commit to it. Yikes.
Oh, goodness. Alrighty, so Ashara and the Mechagon. So in 8.2, we're getting the new dungeon, the Mechagon. Saying Helios has really good experience in the Mechagon. He has been... Oh, yeah. He was in there for <laughs> six hours today doing hard yeah, mode. Yeah, still haven't slept because of that. Hard mode. Still haven't slept. Hard mode Mechagon. What do you... Okay, so the, obviously them bringing back hard mode Mechagon seems like a decent idea. Do you have any, like, strong opinions for, like, hard mode stuff? Because we know for um, Karazhan they had the uh, Nightbane event where you just like run through Kara, you would do a couple of things and then you'd summon Nightbane, get his mount or whatever else. And he dropped decent loot. What do you think about the hard mode of Mechagon saying? Do you feel like it's something that is like just good for the game in general? Uh, definitely. I mean, I think that I appreciate it that Blizzard, you know, designs these mega dungeons uh, as a, you know, they're intended to be above the average dungeon and I, I do like it that they get creative with them. They, you know, they want the five player ex experience to be not just something you should be able to steamroll at all time, like regular dungeons. Um, and like, not like, not in the form of maybe like a timer, right? They want to make it, they want to make dungeons interesting. And I really like that in other ways than either put a timer on it or uh, just not, I mean, it's a good, it's a good way of. I definitely think it's obviously it's not intended to be for you know all players right you can do the dungeon normally and that's fine you'll get everything out of it but players that want to you know make a challenge out of it have that that option uh so how does the how does karazhan necessarily feel compared to mechagon because obviously karazhan on release was a little bit overtuned in the sense of like nightbane was super hard we obviously had flame wreath which uh received su substantial nerfs over the course of all of legion and then we had uh, like Morose getting his Garrote initial hit nerfed like 150% just because that was additionally incredibly overtuned. So how does Mechagon feel as like a Mythic Zero? And is it going to be like Mythic Plus ready? Or do you think it's going to still be a little bit lackluster in that? And we'll potentially need to see some tuning stuff. I think uh, compared to Karazhan, it's, I think it's very similar. I do think, that, at least in the current version this week, um, they, it definitely is, you know, even with a couple bugs making it definitely more difficult than it is, uh, there are some really punishing, it, it is, I would say, a very difficult dungeon. I do think I could see it, you know, receiving several nerfs, uh, but compared to Karazhan, it's actually, I, I want to say it's reversed, because I feel like Karazhan, to me, I remember... The, the outside yeah like moros like a lot of those later bosses were very like there's medivh he's very punishing and honestly the a lot of the bosses are actually not that punishing i would say except for maybe like the trog boss he's been a little punishing now uh mm -hmm. they've been there, there's some really wonky tuning with there's some the, bad la trash, the, the right? later, the later half of the dungeon. Surprisingly, is actually, in my opinion, very undertuned. Uh, I haven't done it since they buffed the health, though, so I would have to see that. Uh, they, they almost like increased everything by like fifty percent to hundred percent since last time I've done it. I did the first half again after it, and it was definitely, definitely mm -hmm. a lot harder. And that was excluding like I even without like trying to do it on hard mode, it would definitely be something that would like for players that were geared like 420, 415 item mode in that range, we were definitely having a problem. But ah. uh I don't I don't know the actual tuning, like whether they want it because it drops four fifteen loot, so I'd assume that you'd be able to go and do it at like four oh five, four hundred item level. Mm -hmm. And those bosses would last pretty pretty long time for sure in their current health values do you think it should be more accessible for like the average player base as a mythic zero uh as a mythic zero and the first time and only version of the i definitely think it should be a little more accessible i think that the way they have it right now it's a bit overtuned the hard modes maybe somehow could add more health to the bosses to the way they are kind of right now um as for being uh mythic plus ready the yeah we're definitely there's a, several mechanics in there on many of those bosses that will not 
that that will make your healer cry <laughs> as their whole group just <laughs> dies to a single unavoidable mechanic that just does everyone's health and 100 percent health and damage over six seconds mm-hmm. and there's nothing you can do on mythic zero by the way it's it's been interesting so they obviously they did karazhan in legion and then they also did cathedral of eternal night and see the triumvirate cathedral of eternal night i think ended up getting nerfed like four or five times just back to back to back because that dungeon was wild on release see the triumvirate was uh, i think the least fun dungeon and by far the most challenging dungeon just because of the third boss and the third boss room of how the trash and the bosses ended up being so it's definitely going to be interesting to see if they are able to kind of hammer in the tuning on where Mechagon should be whenever it does get ready to be released as like a Mythic Plus dungeon and whenever they're going to end up releasing indoor and outdoor Mechagon or whatever they end up calling it, right? And it'll be, I think, I think it'll be like Mechagon Junkyard and Mechagon's All right. calling it right now. Yeah, Mechagon Junkyard and Mechagon what? City. Okay. Yeah, there's the city, city. part. Yeah. All right, we're going to hold you to that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All righty. And then we got Ashara. So raid testing has been recent because they always do raid testing. I guess some people could argue too quick after Mythic is finished for some of the top guilds because it really doesn't feel like you end up having a break a lot of the time. So how is Boomkin going to be in Ashara, Nick? I see that we've seen pictures of you doing 25% more damage than the rest of your guild on some fights, which is... All right, listen. Listen, that was because I was abusing some interesting essence mechanics where, like, the Guardian essence and the crit essence stupidly stack that minor part of the crit essence, and I had, like, 30 or 40% uptime on that 100% crit buff, which made me, like, huh. kind of look stupid on <laughs> Ashura, but overall, like, besides stuff like that, I think we are one of the best casters, casters right now. Unless they, like, nerf everything into the ground, like, right before the patch hits again. Stop. Which I hope they don't. Stop. I mean, to be honest, we haven't seen, like, some hitting nerfs recently. Like, everyone knew that Shadow Priests uh, would be, like, very, very good for mm-hmm. Crucible of the Storms. And it still ended up being, like, very good. Same for Shaman. Like, it always was predictable what would be good. Um, In Leech Stream, we had, like, stuff where... You were thinking a certain class would be good, and then they just end up nerfed it they into the ground it. right yeah. before. <laughs> Besides, like, Affliction Lock, which dodged it every time. Um, but currently, it seems like they don't really nerf stuff too hard. They just let it pass, unless it's, like, actually, like, game-breaking, I guess. Um, so... If they don't change any major parts about our class, I think we're going to end up being like in a good spot, in a very good spot. Yeah, and then how how do you feel about ranged DPS as whole as a whole in Ashara? Obviously, we've seen a lot of uh, melee unfriendly things in the past couple of tiers. So, what what do you think about Ashara for for the ranged DPS perspective, the best perspective? So, um, you definitely have your spot. It's not like melee is OP now. Nothing has really changed besides that some melees might get a spot now because they're like good enough and they have some some spots open because the bosses are not that punishing for melees. But there's certain bosses who I don't think you would play like any melees or maybe like the mandatory ones like Demon Hunter. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't think much has changed besides like maybe yeah, one two spots you could open up for melees. There's like a lot of multi-target fights and like some priority targets and the the, the normal cleave fights. Yeah. Like you have everything again. Like a what is a council fight, which is kind of cool. Overall, the fights look kind of cool all together. Like the not a shower, the boss before a shower looks like super hard and. It has a lot of dots and, and not a lot of dots, a lot of ads and might just be like a good multi target, multi cleave dot fight, something like that. I don't really know why they've swapped and are now doing this like spread cleave stuff a lot lately. It that definitely does not lend itself to being melee friendly at all. 
just a lot more of the spread cleave stuff. And then in addition to that, like pretty, like a lot of the ranged DPS classes have like cleave to single target damage conversion with, you have stuff like shadowy apparitions. I, I guess shooting stars is kind of that, but like on a diminished, <laughs> shooting stars is that, but it's like, it, it, it of course gets diminished returns based on targets hit. So it's normally not as good, but it's, it's just like fundamentally how it ends up working out. A lot of the class, like a lot of the range classes, are balanced around doing one to one damage with melee on single target, while having these pretty good AOE to, or cleave to single target damage conversions, while also being able to have no like like very few positioning restrictions. And in addition to that, I don't know. It it seems like ranged as just a general rule is just too strong in in the raid right now. Whereas the only reason that ranged isn't overwhelmingly Bis and Mythic Plus is just because of how many kicks are required for a bunch of the packs. So that's definitely a thing. Saying, what are you going to have to reroll to if Moonkin's bad? Hunter? If it's bad in the, in the raid? Yeah. Nah, I'm Moonkin. I'm just, that's it. <laughs> oh, you're not, you're not playing yeah. Feral? No. No. Feral <laughs> is utter trash. Don't ever take a Feral. Never. I only spec that spec to uh, re-stealth after skipping trash, so I don't die. Oh, for the better stealth? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, that's, about, that's about the most use I've found for that spec, this entire expansion. <laughs> Have you ever played Feral, Sang? Or not really? Uh, I've never played it, like... I mean, I've only ever played it to just meme and just be Feral for a pulp. Why not? I was bored. I've never, like, actually done like anything real on it though yeah why don't you play i mean i mean i've done real stuff on it but i've never like seriously played it for like progression or anything <laughs> sometimes i just do a farm night as feral i'm like wait oh. really not 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 recently though i haven't done that since like siege of Orgamar, but okay okay well so, so that's been a while dude you should have done cool dad as feral i don't want to see that oh my god nope Yo, you could have hit the. Oh wait, they didn't even have. Did they have brutal slash yet? I don't think they got. I don't think they got that ability until tomb, right? I think they had brutal slash then. Maybe it wasn't used. Maybe maybe it was added the patch right after. I remember it being around there. Yeah, yeah I think it was added like that eight one five patch. Maybe I don't really know too much about Feral. I'm never playing Feral. Nick, uh, what are you gonna have to play if Moonkin's too terrible in Ashara? Moonkin. I I'm I'm a one trick. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. So I'm glad that there's three Munka one tricks here. Hey, I'm not a one trick. Okay, I just I've seen that to play shaman play. after Unat. I... After Unat, I'm not playing shaman. Nope. All right. Well, your shaman was decent on Unat. Yeah, except it died like six times on the kill. All right, <laughs> that was not. Oh fun. my god. Six god. I didn't even know you could die that many times and still kill a boss for one person. Have you met Goosey? He proves that you have you met can. have you met Tattles? What is that? In Strides? Or oh, Hearts of Vela? What was it? Yeah, God King Scoball, dude. Don't talk about. He it. can die like three times in a fight, easily. <laughs> I don't have Ankh either. Yeah. So, how do the Ashar fights um, feel relative to like Battle of Jazar Lord and Uldir? Nick? Much more interesting. Like why? They look way better. Like not even when. <laughs> It's not even like new mechanics, it's just they, they look more interesting. I don't know. I found BUD very, very boring and too easy. And current tuning still is kind of off, but it's better than BUD was on PTR testing. You actually Bosses feel more flushed out already, besides like maybe Ashara and the uh, boss before that, because they were like kind of broken and did way too much damage. But... um. Mechanics are kind of cool. I'm not a fan of the Ashara mechanic where you have to like stand still, soak some orbs, or move around and soak some orbs, or like stand alone and do some shit. I, I'm not a fan, mm -hmm. but it's something new and kind of interesting, I think, in some way. And the whole mechanic with the room where you have to like soak up those wards to not die. Um, it's a lot of movement and probably a challenging fight on Mythic. Definitely, I would say. Okay. Um, so just overall looks way better and promising. You thought, you thought BOD was boring? I, th I think I almost lend some issue to that. I thought the fights in BOD... I don't know, what was interesting about BOD? Mechatork, uh, 
and Opulence were two very, very well-designed fights. Uh, obviously, Opulence is like a fourth boss of the instance, so it's not going to be like the most like the most challenging thing. But just how you ended up dealing with like the gems and whatnot made that fight very interesting for me. And then Mecha Mechatork, obviously, with the robots, the fight itself obviously it didn't change from Heroic to Mythic too terribly much. But just the fight by design with how you end up dealing with all the robots and you end up rooting them and everything, it felt like it was a pretty good fight. Jumping out of line of sight, them utilizing line of sight is a mechanic that we haven't seen like in a while either for raid bosses. So I, th I thought that fight, those two were actually incredibly good. Uh, Jane, About the line of sight, uh, they actually love that. They use that in Ashura too. Yeah. Uh, they actually really use that a lot, I think. Um, but Opulence could have been a good boss. It was just... Too easy it's, tune, it's I think. Fourth boss of the instance. I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, things. still they could have done it a bit harder. Same mm -hmm. for like Rastakan, which was just abused and then died instantly. I don't know. I didn't enjoy it I at don't all. Know, for me, I actually kind of like. I do kind of disagree. Like, I I mean, obviously, I haven't seen mythic testing of uh, the Eternal Palace yet, so there's there's always room. But I think Bod did have. A, a, like the mechanics, I think were good. However, they it, it definitely seemed very undertuned, and I think I would say that Eternal Palace. Honestly, I'm not impressed with many of the mechanics, but I do think that uh, they can be really hard bosses. Like I think a lot of them will be very, very difficult bosses, even though the mechanics may not be very interesting or very new. I think a lot of them are kind of reused but they have a history of being kind of difficult mechanic. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um, I think that's what I was saying, basically. Like, there's no new mechanics so far. Who knows about Mythic? Mythic might open up some new stuff. Um, but they look more promising in terms of, like, how hard they are. I, I didn't enjoy BOD that much because it was, like, such an easy tier besides Jaina. Um, the rest was, like, sort of a rollover where you just cleared it instantly. Uh, so I'm hoping for like a harder tier, okay. not as hard as Crucibles, but something in between maybe. So, so how much do you value like difficulty of encounter relative to like newness of the mechanics? Like, what 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 actually makes like an enjoyable fight for you? Uh, saying you can hop in first, and then we, we can go to Nick with that. So Honestly, for me, and I actually have a very different op opinion from I think a lot of people in my guild actually, but I enjoy a raid a lot by like i would say like battle of Zarlor is definitely one of my favorite raids despite it being definitely one of the more easier raids but that was just it was like i mean there's a lot of a lot of things to it i think i just look at the raid as a whole as in like i mean even things such as like just aesthetics and stuff like you know dinosaurs and <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a gmod mount and a jaina mount so i'm two yeah, thumbs up yeah, on two that in instance, but there's i mean the, amount. the mechanics were interesting i think they had you do like i i'm glad that there's like almost no boss that you just stood there and dps and just kind of dodged mechanics a little bit a lot of them had like maybe the whole raid moving to a single spot or you know ha you having to do like really weird stuff like mechatork robots i mean they they were really good and that's why i think the raid was a good raid despite the fact that every boss was very undertuned and had no help um the eternal palace like a lot of the a lot of the bosses just they have i see like i mean i think honestly if i were to like look at every boss equally like ajara and the very first boss of the instance, like the very first boss of that instance, actually really interesting. The I think it's the Abyssal Commander or something like that. I yeah. kind of like the whole. If that boss like, is hard, I'm gonna kill myself, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's the first boss, but I think it's a actually really interesting boss. Definitely more interesting than probably like the like the hatchery boss. Yes, it's the hatchery oh, boss my God. is going to I. I'm calling it now that is just going to be the worst, most boring fight in the entire instance. I'm writing it down. Hatch and, it's, and, so, it's, and it's gated behind uh, Ashfane, which I think Ashfane will be a, a very difficult boss. Like, I think it'll be a good mid, maybe a, hopefully it's a, kind of a mid tier. I feel like the boss right after that is completely free. But I could be wrong. It could change. Wait, um, is that is that an underwater boss? No, right? No, no. 
Can we just not talk about that one? I I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> that one. No trash. That. Oh man. Yeah. We did like is... two pulls on on the boss while testing, and everyone was like, "Can we just leave? No one wants to do it. It's bugged as hell, and it seems so boring." And we just like, yeah, we're ending it here. Well, we, yeah. We don't care it's, about this. It's basically because of how like water ends up functioning in WoW, where like you either can place abilities on top of the water. Or at the very bottom of the water. There's no in between. <laughs> so you have stuff like Demon there Hunter. There's no bottom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have Demon Hunter that like can't use meta. There's like a lot of abilities yeah. that just don't work just because of how water works in WoW. So I assume that they're going to get that fixed up. Like how how did Alec here? I obviously didn't play during Cataclysm, but um, how did Alec here end up working out just because of like you being able to fly around? I don't have any idea. You had those platforms, right? And then at the end, well, you I were don't actually flying know. Flying at the end, right? I would assume that they end up. I don't think they used that many of those AOE spells back then, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Ground um, I would compare it more to like the um Emerald Nightmare boss, the the spider one. It's like similar to that. You have like those three platforms, and you move from platform to platform, right? That's like how the underwater boss yeah. is right now. So I, it, I think it's going to be an easy one shot, but Good definitely literary. going to be very annoying, and no one wants to play it. So I feel like they'll have to make that boss. Uh, it has to yeah. be. It has to be. It has to be that. First. The, cool, the cool, the cool look is all look we're underwater, but they don't want. I don't know. Maybe it's just too distracting, so it's just gonna make it easy. I feel like it's gonna be easier than the first boss. I, I hope probably the first boss is kind of like it. Uh, the first boss is gonna be fun. It's just gonna worry me that because it's the first boss, they're gonna have to make it have like no health. Yeah, I mean, ta- I thought you mean Talon- something like champion. Yeah, Where you like just you kill champions gonna, like one minute. You're gonna kill it like yeah. before. It yeah, does any of the other stuff? You and your 400 pug, a mythic champion of the light. <laughs> I mean, dude, Talok I thought was a pretty good first boss too. That was yeah. interesting, yeah. I mean, they're they're really stepping up their game. I mean, none of them were like really challenging, but yeah, they can be fun still by being the first boss. Um, I definitely think the the last three bosses of the Eternal Palace are they're gonna be definitely hard. I like I I can see them just being hard, and I think that they'll be pretty fun, just like yep. mechanically too. Uh, Queen's yep. Court. I mean, nothing actually new there. I mean, you got botanist orbs and the same, like same stuff. But mm-hmm. I do like the the decrees thrown in there, and the curious to see how that actually plays out when you've got to deal with a lot of those things at the same time. Okay, so saying whenever you're ranking a fight, like whether or not you like it, how much do you end up weighing difficult, like challenging and difficulty of the encounter? Uh, how good like balanced druid is on the fight, and then obviously like newness of mechanics or like unique mechanics. Um, I mean they they all play a part for me. Uh, I mean early on too when I started like raiding like even bosses. I, I like the first time the first time I ever like actually had like a a hard like raid encounter myself when I because I start I've started in Kata and I think the first raid I actually did was Mogishin Vaults that was and Garage All, which is from an actual perspective, you're just literally standing behind the boss and just DPSing it, trying to beat a really short and rage time. A boss like that, like not not much is actually going on, but it, it was a good boss because it was a fairly tight and rage. Mm-hmm. Uh at least for my guild at the time. I don't know how much it actually was. But, <laughs> uh and it it was just like I don't know. I I, it, I would rate like bosses like that pretty high. like I think in rage timers do need to be relevant. I feel like that there's that was another fault in bod right. There was like Rasta no God. no one rage timer existed, so you could just at least keep half of your raid alive. Like the mechanics were deadly enough to kill your players, but it didn't matter because you could still kill a boss with half your raid dead. Okay, so do you uh, think that maybe Mythic might be a little bit too challenging, though, for, like, a mass populace? Of course, we are all, like, saying is he got top two world in BOD, Nick's been top ten for a couple of tiers now. Obviously, we all have... I'm, like, well, top 50 uh, world, so obviously I also play at a decent level. Do you think that... So, like, beyond our scope, do you think that the 
instances might be too challenging for other mythic level guilds like because mythic guild doesn't necessarily even mean getting cutting edge and mythic guild doesn't necessarily mean getting top 50 world but like mythic rating is like what about these guilds that are i don't know like world like 300 or whatever right yeah honestly i actually have to say that i don't think they are i think the raids are fine because uh, honestly, I would say that, again, rage timers do need to be relevant. I think that, you know, for the first few guilds that go in the raid, they should be running into those enraged timers. As as other guilds that, you know, don't raid as much or just, you know, behind, they overcome those enraged timer challenges by getting more gear from just clearing the raid over and over again. Okay. And, that was, and that's kind of a problem with Una, right? I think, like, you can't outgear that fight because it is uh, tuned for, like, nearly gear cap. And they had to like its original design. I definitely think that it, that is like you know top content. That is how you know bosses should be. And then over time, as you know, you're able to outgear the fight. That lets other guilds overcome that difficulty. And I think it's more fair that way. Obviously, yeah, I would agree. But know, like, okay, so they they had a good model in Old Deer with the. With the stuff with the reorigination array, but I feel like they've had like major issues with gear scaling across the whole entire dungeon relative to player power over the past couple of tiers, and we saw it in Bod with you guys transferring Alliance and then coming back and all that other stuff that you guys ended up doing for some extra gear. Obviously, you had the chalk splits and everything else, where players are near capped on their potential power uh, curve for the whole entire instance before stepping foot in it and that's due to splits and that's due to like chalk splits and that's due to uh, i guess swapping alliance the first week titan forging also ends up playing a major role in that too how many heroic splits you do week one i think it's almost like impossible to have a good difficulty curve for the top end while also having a good like difficulty curve for the for like more like more of the populace of mythic range guilds too like, obviously, I, I would prefer a tight enrage check, like you said. I, I think that enrage checks are cool. I thought Cabal was a very good fight because of how tight that enrage was. But as a whole, it's it's difficult to balance something like that, too, I think. Uh, yeah, I do think that... I mean, if I were to look at the, you know, Battle of the Lord, I think that most... Like at the first boss, I think most people would struggle on. Like even, I think would be like the fourth boss, and but like I think uh, the major wall. I feel like like Rastakhan should have been harder. Conclave should have been, harder, and yeah. maybe like Opulence a little easier. I guess so it would be a. I I do think that the the difficulty curve in. Zarlo was pretty messed up, but I think that like I mean most of the gear from like doing the you know alliance stuff like that's kind of intended to get over maybe the middle of and honestly I, I would say that was like completely unnecessary. Like all of that. I, I think I, I think I would almost agree, just because of how it ends up working out with like heroic splits and everything. But like even then, you, you okay. So basically, if you're adding like a like a damage check to something, it would be like what like Jade Fire would be a little bit more challenging whenever the boss is enraged with a hundred energy, right? Because you could basically ten man that boss even if it isn't fully enraged. And you can kill the boss before it even does it. That's, yeah. that's just wrong. Yep, that was stupid. I mean, Jade Jade Fire was entirely too easy, but it's third boss of the instant, so you can't really. You, it's not that you can't. You should not potentially put like a really challenging enrage on it. I think I think we would all be in agreement with Rastakhan being very stupid, and then you have like Mechatork. Obviously, that that almost had like a soft enrage just because of not bombing your whole entire raid and like healer mana. Stormwall Blockade could have had a little bit tighter of an enrage, I think. I, I mean, yeah, Stormwall Blockade needed something to give the boss energy passively. Like the fact that you could just yeah. control those adds enough that it was basically you would never ever hit an enrage on that boss. So until you hit like three adds, then. Then maybe that was a bit too much. So, but... so maybe either the ads can't be slowed, or potentially like I don't know. I th I think I think that fight ended up being like you, if you field the correct comp, the fight well, was flops. Right? The original way of doing like block 
blockade, at least people do, was just like get the boss to eighty energy in phase one. Yeah. Let the bosses do nothing. Like that stuff like that shouldn't that be was allowed. A like fight. if like if the boss had just gained even a little bit of energy passively in the second phase, you would actually have to, you know, do phase one like definitely more properly and it would still be tuned just properly. Like you would be maybe at allowed to get 50 energy in the phase one you have to work with that but you can get the boss to 98 98 points of energy and just be perfectly fine. yeah that was really stupid uh nick, nick what, are, what are your thoughts on like more and hard and rage checks do you think that they're necessary to keep the upper end of mythic rating a little bit more fresh and a little bit in a better state because like for lower end mythic guilds and just general mythic guilds, I don't think it ends up mattering too much because they end up having like longer ends of progression and the content is always a little bit more fresh for them than as opposed to us because we don't want to go through like ten like we don't want to go through three months of farm feeling like the tier wasn't really worth how much effort we put in and all that. So w- what do you think, Nick, personally? So personally I prefer like harder fights over stuff we had in BOD. BOD was totally messed up in my opinion. Um, sure, you had some decent fights and some some progression feel, felt okay, but in, overall it felt like kind of kind of bad to progress on it on most fights. And I I'd like some fights like Cabal. Cabal felt really good. It could have been a bit more harder, and it could have been like an end boss actually if they made it a bit more harder. It had like end boss potential. How does that fight get hard? Um, like realistically, how does that fight actually get harder? How? Mm, you could have potentially just up the the damage numbers and maybe some more HP and then make it so you had to play around with the debuff even more. That sounds awful. <laughs> it sounds awful, yeah. But there's definitely some potential in the fight. It definitely was like a, one of the best fight I had to progress yet. And have you guys, Unit two. Have you guys recleared Cabal Go yet? Yeah, we did. Dude, that fight is like, god awful <laughs> with the changes of my I, lord. I haven't done it's it. It's definitely yet again. not the easiest fight for sure, but I think it's a good fight. So let it, me, let me explain. They changed the void crashes to not go into melee as like a a buff to melee. It's it, so it makes it impossible for your tanks to soak the void crashes, and as the moon can range tank. I actually caught like an STD trying to stand out there and soak as many of those void crashes as I could because they're always on you. It's it's on you the whole entire time and it feels horrible. I keep in mind I haven't tanked that boss yet, so yeah, it's because I'm just standing in the middle, blasting the boss and dodging my shit, trying to keep the buff up. Yeah, um, it's because your guild doesn't trust you. Uh, Sang. Is- <laughs> No, because we have a we have an art that does it, and I do more damage. That's why, you know. No, 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 no. It's because your guild doesn't trust you. You see, uh, Limit has Sang doing it. Might has me doing it now. So very trustworthy people. Alpha males. You're just a beta. It is what it is, Nick. All right. So you why didn't Chad you kill Limit Raider, Sang Helios, and you got the beta Nick? Drake. Aren't you zero out of two yet? <laughs> I'm still? still zero out of two. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Of the world's most Damn. progressed zero out of two mythic raider. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunate. I have like 250 pulls on Una and like 130 on Cabal. There's nothing for me to say. <laughs> yeah, but I I definitely agree uh, with like what most of you said. Uh, I want some harder bosses, not like wall type of stuff, not something we had in Tomb. But I don't mind seeing uh, for an avatar again as like. An end boss, or even like pre end boss, and like sort of Jaina as an end boss or Unad as an end boss again. I think that's more interesting, especially for like the world race and uh, the whole streaming yet that's happening. Um, and just in terms of how you progress the f- like the entire tier, it feels way better to have like a wall within yeah. the raid and then the end boss after that. It's It's definitely like exhausting to progress on but it feels way better in the end if you kill the boss well yeah i would end up doing good i i think it's also good for the game for what it's worth too to have um yeah have it be more of like a spectator event of like the the real race to world first with challenging bosses that's more of like a like a real battle between the guilds and stuff like that as opposed to 
some real meme tier bosses. So I, I, th I think for what it's worth, while it might not be the best that Mythic is tuned like ridiculously hard, I think it is better as like spectator for spectators and viewers and just content consumers of World of Warcraft for it to be a little bit more challenging in the beginning, and then them to kind of tune it back and bring it back down whenever more guilds are reaching that point. All right. So, anything else that you guys want to say about Ashara? Make Mythic look good, so I have something to do. <laughs> Give me content. Yep. Give me content. Don't let me farm those perts. Please fix. Please fix oh, Residium. They, they fixed that. They fixed that. Okay. Please fix Residium too. Thanks. Yeah, I want to spend my. I really want to spend it to like get the good gear to do you know the damage now. Yeah. But you know, just sitting out on some. Scuffed Azerite. Until then, just you know. How how many uh how much residuum do you have right now, Sang? I'm up to like uh twenty four thousand. Still counting. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> twenty four thousand. Chalk splits. I'm telling you. Wait, are you guys doing chalk splits now? We we uh, are not right now. We're I think we're just doing armor splits and kind of still feeding like unnecessary as right to a single person in each not necessarily yeah. designed for So that that's yet, how but... you have twenty four K. Alright, I see. Yep, I am one of the feeds, it's great. Nick, how much how or, much or, you or miserable. Yeah. I'm like at maybe nine K or something. I've I've spent a lot of I'm at like eighty five hundred. So Sang comes out, yeah, but twenty four K don't mind me. I'm just like, yeah, what? I've only <laughs> I think I've only ever rolled a single Azerite piece since the system came out. Like one. I rolled one pair of shoulders. I got the uh, Trade Winds Streaking Star shoulders and. Not even the Gorak Tool that, shoulders, yeah, dude. No, no, I got those. Oof. Big oof. I, I used those shoulders when uh, for progression. And I didn't get the Mestra shoulders until like the third third kill. Oh, no. Yeah, fortunate enough, the Mestra shoulders are still really good, so it's hard for. Yeah. For that to be I just, I just, I'm not a fan of that system. I think they should have clarified already if they're going to change it or not. It just makes you feel so awkward to sit on like 26k residuum, just waiting for the announcement to hit. Um, yeah, if they, if they announce that like, <laughs> oh, by the way, we're resetting, <laughs> and then I like, I'm just not just gonna delete his character. Yeah. I'll just be like annoyed. Oh I mean, it only counts for like a few builds that do it, right? So, yeah. but it's kind of awkward for us because we spend so much time preparing for it, and in the end, they say like, "Yeah, we just up the cost by like one hundred, and now it costs like one hundred thousand residium." And you're just like, "Okay, guess I wasted my time for nothing." Thanks. Yeah. What do you What are you guys' thoughts on splits in general? Not just like the chalk splits. Obviously, those are lame. What are you guys' thoughts on like splits in general? Do you think that splits are like healthy for the game? Definitely not, but I don't mind them personally. Um, uh, I I got used to it. Do you think splits would be like less relevant if Titan Forging didn't exist? Depends, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Or, or do you think that they're... I mean, you would still do them to get the gear, right? Would they, would you're not they aiming for more? like Titan Forging, you're aiming for like just specific gear, gear right? In, in, in general. Would they be more or less relevant if Titan Forging didn't exist? I think. Because basically, with Titan Forging. I don't think much player... would change. Well, so basically, with Titan Forging, your player power is closer to what it's going to be in the next raid because of farm farming up gear prior to that. But then, like, you get so much just like RNG the loot. Uh, during that first heroic week, that it's hard to say like what's what. I don't know. Saying what? Are you, what are your thoughts on splits in general? Are you a fan? You're not a fan? Um, I'm okay with splits, but I hate the version of splits now where we're stacking like our entire raid with as much of a single armor type as possible, and that just it's not fun to like run into situations where you know you got the the. Tell me mail, about it. Tell mail, me about it. <laughs> mail raids and plate raids are just the worst experience ever. You, you know, you get to uh, you have a mail raid and this Rastakhan Mecha Torque is just awful. And the melee raid, the plate raid, blockade is awful. It just <laughs> I I hate doing it. I I want 
you know, runs is just be easy. Boom. I, I wouldn't mind splits at all. If you know, you just brought them, brought whatever. Brought a balanced comp, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Like if it, it was fine, you know, you get in and out really quick. It's not that long of a clear, but like you stacking a rate of a single like type is, it is as just a little bit of annoyances to the raid clears. I'd rather it not be a thing. I mean, I've been a fan of always like gearing several characters just because I like to do so, but. Yeah, I mean, alts and splits are a thing, especially if you want to do decent and mythic plus or whatever else. Just having like access to guild splits or alts or whatever is going to be pretty nice. All right, but I think that might be it for us today. Sang, where can we find you? Uh, tell tell us what you do, or plug yourself. Well, I occasionally stream on Twitch. You know, I usually only stream like raid clears or random interesting stuff. I have no streaming schedule or anything. I just stream when I want. Well, that's that's Sang Helios. Wow, that's that Twitch name. I have a YouTube as well, same name. Uh, I rarely upload anything to it now, but occasionally I will. Otherwise, I mean, I just uh, just in game, you know, playing WoW. Usually on all the time. Island expedition WoWhead guides. Yeah, I sometimes write guides for stuff. That Thanks. is, yeah. <laughs> I just play the game <laughs> and play it. Unlike probably most people, that's just me. Alrighty, Mick, you got anything that you want to say? I don't know. I can say that we are going to stream Ashera. Um, oh, that's shit. that's set. Yeah, we kind of announced it yesterday. Uh, besides that, I don't know. Watch my stream twitch.tv slash nickdruid. If I ever stream again, <laughs> probably <laughs> not. You got a new CPU yet? Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. I actually do. I just haven't set up anything, so okay. I'm I'm lazy. And we haven't, like, done shit in a week or so, so there was no, like, real reason for me to stream. Uh, Sang, can you come out and say that you guys are streaming progression already? Uh, uh, I can't comment, no. All right, no comment. Oh, no comment, though. No comment, all right, no comment. We'll uh, leave it at that. Uh, check down in the description for our Patreon, Discord, uh, all of our Twitches and stuff like that. And perfect. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. I will see you guys later. Later. Bye. Peace.